Hey guys, it is the end of a hot, sticky summer day, 90 degree day. It's hotter here today in the Finger Lakes of New York than in Inverness, Florida, I noticed, ironically enough. Uh, but it is Friday, July 1st. We have made it halfway through 2022. Do you believe it, guys? This year is one half over. We will see what the second half brings, but since it is Friday, July 1st, I was supposed to be here doing what I try to do every Friday, and that's bring you my ecological meltdown roundup rant, uh, where I check in with those, uh, I guess, former, those former collapsitarians over there at mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls and uh, guys I don't know what's going on with Rhett. I, 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 I don't know if he's just gone full-blown apocalyptimist or what. Uh, I have to say I have been uh, doing this rant for over 10 years and this is the most apocalyptic, hopium filled, just blah, blah, blah that I have ever found on Manga Bay. I, I don't know what is going on. Uh, I do notice is this the fifth week that Manga Bay has not mentioned? deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. I, I think for the first time in how many years Jair Bozo Nero's name never mentioned anywhere in Manga Bay. Uh, I don't think maybe somewhere buried at least in the highlights. So guys I, I, I was almost ready just to make this uh, my Saturday hopium roundup. I could go through here. I, I can't resist a, a couple of them out of Africa. We're gonna we're gonna share a couple. So this will be a very quick. Uh, uh, I, I I don't even know how I can call this an ecological meltdown roundup rant. Uh, it sounds, according to Rhett, we're just going to techno-utopiaize our way out of this mess and turn the freight train around. Uh, it's what it sounds to me like reading Manga Bay this, this week. Uh, but also, we have a big storm moving in. I am thrilled to say got a bunch of campers up on the side of the hill. I'm glad they're not right next to the creek. We're going to have a wild rainy night and I'm hoping that we'll have time for one more spectacular lightning bug show here in a few minutes. Beautiful lightning bugs in a jar up here. So I need to get out and enjoy the lightning bug show while I still can. So uh we're just going since this is okay. Good Lord, the, I, I love it when he has the H word in the number one in, in the number one story, uh, Manga Bay, the H word. Yes, <clears throat> about how birding tourism, birding tourism is going to save the planet. Here is how the noble savages are going to save the oceans, I guess. Uh, here is how a reforestation app, a reforestation app, yep, that's going to save the planet. Uh, finally, we have some reality. In Brazil, an indigenous land defender's unsolved killing is the deadly norm. Talking about this was not the guy they were talking about. They're talking about this dude. They, they just looked at one of these people. Uh, he with this Indian dude down there was gunned down 
uh, over two years ago, uh, two years and no leads, uh, perpetrators of crimes against environmental activists are rarely brought to justice in Brazil with a government report showing exactly zero convictions for the 35 people, you know, officially killed in incidents of rural violence last year. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, as criminal gangs that covet the Amazon's rich resources act with impunity, impunity in threatening defenders and invading protected lands. Uh, so this is kind of talking about uh, Bozo Nero. Activists point to a combination of the government's anti-indigenous rhetoric and the undermining of environmental agencies is helping incite the current surge of invasions and violence against land defenders in the Brazilian Amazon. There you go. And then we go back to the hopium. I, I love this one. Uh, we are winning. <coughs> we are winning <coughs> with climate action. Activism, just not fast enough. Yes, this article is a commentary. The views expressed are those of the author and not necessarily of Manga Bay or Collapse Chronicles. All right, here's how those Costa Ricans are saving the planet. Yes, we've talked about uh, Costa Ricans saving the planet. Uh, here we go. A year before deep sea mining could begin, calls for a moratorium build. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna make the wild prediction that there will be no moratorium on deep sea mining and you can expect it to crank up in about a year. All right, we now have Fitbit for whales. There you go. Fitbit for whales saving the planet. Here is, all right, how bamboo Bicycles, bamboo bicycles are saving the planet. My f that, this one there, there's two of them. Th this one might be my uh, my favorite hopium article. I, I I'm going to uh, this headline here. Uh, th this is is uh, a, a biblical swarm of hopium. High-tech early warning system could curb next South African locust swarm. Yes. Uh, farmers are pinning their huh, are pinning their huh, huh, pinning their hopes on new software that will track newborn locusts in real time, you know, when they're about this big and don't have any wings. So this new software in Africa will track newborn locusts in real time, enabling farmers to target and exterminate the pest before they take to the skies. Yes, there you go. Here's, uh, this isn't hopium. This is just, uh, you, you know, if I had the no shit Sherlock button, imagine this uh, sky. Well, 
I was going to say this is a sky is blue headline, but I guess this is a sky is gray headline as Jakarta chokes on toxic air, Indonesian government stalls on taking action. Yes. Activists say the national government has not done much at all to address the problem. Yes, okay. Here is how... And I'm all for these wildlife corridors. Don't get me wrong. I mean, how can you be against a wildlife corridor? This is how uh, biologists and communities are saving jaguars in Mexico to give them safe passage from one place for them to get shot so they can go to another place to get shot. Yes. Here we go. Indigenous communities in Colombia's Amazon move closer to self-governance. Yes. Uh-huh. After 500 years, there we go. Uh, I love this one. <laughs> this is not the onion. I, uh, I, I, I'm trying to wrap my head around what the African Court of Human and People's Rights looks like. What does that mean anyway? The African Court of Human and people's rights. But, y y you know, I mean, I guess I can understand that. Uh, it's not the court of human rights. It's not the court of people's rights. I, I mean, I'm always saying that uh, people accuse me of being a uh, misanthrope, thinking I hate people. I don't hate people. I love people. Some of my best friends are people. I don't care for humans, but so the African court is, I guess they care for humans and people, which is part of the problem in Africa. But anyway, the African court of human and people's rights rules in favor of indigenous land titles and reparations from the Kenyan government. Yes. <clears throat> so, however, rights groups such as the Minority Rights Group International, of course that would be white people, and a lawyer representing the Ogiek tribe in court remain apprehensive over the Kenyan government's intention to follow through with the court's ruling. Do you think so? Okay, guys, you will not believe this. Experts fear the end of... begins with a V. Alright, see how many of you have been following uh, Manga Bay for years. Uh, I need to find the first time I did this rant. Uh, experts fear the end of the V word. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. We are now down to eight individuals of the V word on the planet right now, remaining alive on this planet, we are talking about the Vaquita. And experts fear the end of Vaquitas after green light for export of captive bred Totaba fish. Uh, here is an article about uh, the latest know about human tiger 
conflicts in Nepal. Yes. Oh, those old pesky tigers. Oh, all right, here's my other, the one that I loved. Uh, <laughs> this headline is right up there with the locust swarms. All right. Cameroon's Nigerian refugees. So you understand these are people fleeing Nigeria to Cameroon looking for a better life. Cameroon's Nigerian refugees who degraded their camp are now vanguards of reforestation. It says right here, Nigerian refugees are the new vanguards of reforestation on the planet. Yes. The influx of the refugees driven from their homes by the advance of the Islamist group Boko Haram led to a surge, a, a surge in logging for fuel wood and timber. Hmm. But now a reforestation program yes, has to date planted more than 400,000 trees across 250 acres. There you go. And here is the uh, latest on uh, Manga Bay beating up on the Mennonites. This weird story. Uh, I've actually seen videos about this big Mennonite colony down there in uh, Bolivia. Just, uh, you know, just, just wreaking havoc on the forest. So what's up with the Mennonites? Mennonite colony builds bridge and clears forest in, inside Bolivian protected areas. And this was four years ago. A Mennonite colony purchased 35,000 acres of land in Bolivia. They have since built a bridge and developed a, now, a network of roads and are in the process of clearing vast swaths of forest. Portions of the property they're clearing lie within two protected areas, including a wetland of international importance. Yes, and then uh, just for you, you guys, you know, I, I feel kind of bad, I guess, in, in trying to uh, murder the myth of the noble savage. Right here in Manga Bay, members of a local indigenous community voiced support for the land clearing activities, saying that all the new roads, you know, that the Mennonites are building and the new bridge will help connect them to medical facilities. However, scientists and conservationists are concerned about the impact of the deforestation on water resources, wildlife, and guess what? Indigenous groups. Speaking of which, here we go. Switzerland, the Swiss pledge to stop illegal gold imports from Brazilian indigenous reserves. Yes, and, and you better believe that a lot of the indigenous people in Brazil will be plenty pissed off about that. Alright, we're going to wind up in sub-Saharan Africa 20 years since a massive ivory seizure, what lessons have we learned? Yes. In late June of 2002, a container ship docked in Singapore with a massive shipment of ivory which was seized. It was the largest 
seizure of its kind since an international ban on the ivory trade came into force in 1989, and the lessons learned from it would change the way the illegal wildlife trade was investigated and tackled. But it is unfortunate that some of the biggest lessons from that event still have not been put into practice. Do you think so? So anyway, guys, that is the Mangabe Roundup. As they say, I could come back tomorrow and just do the my Hopium Roundup, but uh, I'm off to watch lightning bugs. I'm off to make a margarita and go watch the lightning bugs before the lightning storm moves in. I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your own lightning bug show before the storm moves in while you still can. Bye, guys. All right, little dog, that was not that bad. You have to admit, that was not that bad. You have a tiger eating your face. Do you know that or not? A tiger is eating your face, Santa Panza. Tell Tigger. Bye, guys.